7, 11, 17, 21. When I was seven, I drank my first beer. When I was 11, I learned to steal from the liquor store. When I was 17, I got arrested for a DUI. When I was 21, I realized my mom was an alcoholic. Things were handed down to me directly and indirectly from, from my elders, you know, from my grandparents and my mother. And then I've, I've embodied those things. And then there's the possibility with left un, un, unchecked that I will hand those things down to my, to my son. And it was, I think it was Nina Simone that said that, you know, it's our job as artists to speak about what's going on. Right. And she said she had a, felt a personal responsibility to do so. And I think a lot of us do. I think, especially spoken word, it, it, it is this verbal expression of the injustices that are taking place in our world, but then also in our hearts and in our minds. There is a pride that comes with being able to hold down your liquor. Uh, Irish pastime of out drinking men whose machismo is bigger than their tolerance because a woman who can swallow the burn and not turn to ash is considered a hot commodity. As a kid, I was told that the Irish do two things well. We drink and we fight. I think first I, I just thought of how over fetishized, right, women are and coming from a strong Irish Catholic background, um, I thought about the women in my family first. And I thought about how often we were holding up the men in our community who are suffering from alcoholism. I thought about how often we see commercials that are, you know, all the Irish people in a pub holding up mugs and clinking glasses and how many Irish toasts are told. And then thinking about, you know, St. Patrick's Day as this holiday that celebrates, right, really driving this, you know, a saint, right, who St. Patrick wasn't even Irish, which is ironic, he was English. Um, but we won't get into that of things that are colonized by the English. Um, but, you know, thinking about how all of a sudden this holiday has been commandeered um, to push alcohol, to push that, um, and how they frame it and sell it in a way that very much um, promotes my people as alcoholics to their benefit to get other cultures to participate in. Right, because what happens is when you see like an, uh, an alcohol ad, right? If you can't contextualize that historically to see that this has been going on for a long time, right? Which, which at the same time, I think elevates the problem. Right. If you're not able to look at it in just like an isolated vacuum, but you have to look at it in the historical context. Right. What it does is it illuminates that this is like an, a, a systematic intrinsic problem that we're dealing with. And I think that's cathartic to the point where it makes you want to pursue action, because if you don't you understand this history, then, you know, if you don't work out this history, this this history of colonization, we're going to repeat it. Back, born and raised in West Los Angeles in a neighborhood that was 75% African American, was told my blood was a mixture of Chinese and Spanish that made Filipino from an island that was in Asia, but told I was not Asian. Babysat by Hispanic women who spoke Spanish to their children and that included me. Now go ahead and tell me about your identity crisis growing up. And it didn't help that the one store around the corner sold 40s Mexican and Chinese food. I knew it was a problem when the Santa Carne Asada Chow Mein and liquor became a scent that was familiar. Even my nose got confused. Cut. Data from, from the alcohol industry, it shows that people choose their drinking patterns and behaviors and even the type of brand they will drink for the rest of their lives by age 25. So the alcohol industry has to get you to decide what brand you're gonna choose before you're 25. And also, by that age, uh, the folks that are going to go into uh, the area of alcohol dependence will be decided. 
So we're talking about probably the industry has to target age 12 years to 25 to get their consumer base. 